2025 is undeniably the year of the humanoid. Everywhere you look, Atlas, Tesla Optimus, Unitree G1, and now the new Unitree R1, every bot is trying to out-robot the other. If G1 is the cooler, older sibling, dialing in the moves and sophistication, then R1 is the rebellious little brother doing backflips in a backyard for under $6,000. So today on Robo Fantastic, we're diving deep into the ultimate head-to-head. -head. Unitree G1 versus Unitree R1. Who's built better? Who's cheaper? And who's just plain crazier? Let's get this Robo Showdown started. Make sure you're subscribed, hit that like button, and let's tumble into it. First up, the Unitree G1. Released in 2024, priced around $16,000. $99,000 yuan. Weighing about 35 kilograms and standing 1.32 m tall. It comes equipped with up to 43 joint motors. True force position hybrid control. Three finger decks, three dash, one hands capable of precise tasks like soldering or cracking a walnut. It's got real sense plus LiDAR vision. Two hour battery life. And throws precise walks dances, and even walks off punches like a robotic James Bond. And here's the newcomer, and more importantly the price slasher, R1, all shiny, under $6,000, 39,900 yuan, at launch, weighing only about 25 kilograms and around 1.21 to 1.22 m tall. It's got 26 joints, simple paddle-like hands, onboard AI for vision and voice, and a hot swappable battery giving one-hour runtime. It's built with only enough sophistication to do cartwheels, handstands, and quick sprints. Not to make your breakfast. Price. G1 $16,000 versus R1 $6,000. That's the robo version of MacBook versus Chromebook. Weight slash size. G1 35kg versus R1 25kg. Lifting R1 is like holding a kid. G1 is more like a bowling ball. Degrees of freedom. G1 with 23 to 43 DOF, depending on config, hands, wrists, waist, versus R1's 26 DOF. Hands and manipulation. G1's three finger decks, three dash one hands with force control means it can pick up eggs or screws. R1, paddle hands suitable for greeting or waving price tags at you. Vision and AI. Both have onboard eight core CPUs. G1 optional jets and Orin. R1 includes a multimodal LLM for voice and image recognition. Battery. G1 approximate 2 hour life. R1 1 hour with hot swappable pack. Durability and behavior. G1 takes a punch, gets up, and keeps walking. R1 does backflips and sprints on grass without toppling over. So in specs, it's clear. G1 is the premium commuter car. Reliable, handles rough terrain, packed with features. R1 is the fun go-kart. Cheaper, lighter, built for stunts with less manipulation finesse. G1's Edge. It's been used in medical teleoperation trials at UC San Diego. XR tools helped it perform needle injections, auscultation, even ultrasound tasks with 70% success rate by non-clinical users. That's not just flexing, it's actual potential healthcare support. R1 Specialty. Backflips, handstands, running around grass fields looking sporty. The tech press calls it a kickboxing robot. It's marketing genius, but don't ask it to thread a needle. Use cases. G1 equals research labs, industrial demos, medical teleop. R1 equals universities, ROS slash AI hobbyists, stunt shows, interactive installations. Fun contrast. G1 might fold your clothes if it had hands and training. Or one might punch the door instead. Even these robots have limitations. G1. Small stature, 4 feet 2 inches. Limits its ability to reach high surfaces. Walking is primitive. Knee forward half squat style. Battery recharge not autonomous. R1. Only one hour of juice. No full autonomy confirmed. Likely remote scripted demos. Limited DOF in upper body and no finger dexterity. Both charge premium Renner safe disclaimers. Keep a safe distance. Don't let robots juggle toddlers. Regulatory approval pending. Here's who should get what. Robot researchers or medtech explorers. Go G1. Higher price, but serious capabilities. Creative educators or hackers. 
Our one gives you face recognition, gestures, and stunts to experiment with, without breaking the bank. Event organizers slash robot performers. Our one for shows. G1 too serious and fewer acrobatics on offer. Hobbyists with serious control dreams. G1 gives force control dexterous hands. Our one is more about leg action. In short, if you want to teach robots to dance kind of beautifully, then G1. Want to teach them to flip until you laugh? Then our one. In the world of humanoids, Unitree strategy is clear. G1 is the flagship. Our one is the scrappy challenger. China's aggressively scaling supply chains let them push prices downward faster than most. $16,000 for G1. $6,000 for our one. All while Tesla says Optimus Gen 3 may hit $20,000 if you're lucky. Seeing both robots side by side, you gotta ask. How long until our two rolls out and our one becomes yesterday's news? Will G1 get a price cut? Will Tesla match China's price war? It feels like a robot showdown is brewing and we're front row seats. So what's the final verdict? G1 equals the sophisticated, dexterous, premium performer built for serious robotics. Our one equals the affordable, athletic, stunt-ready robot built for fun, experimentation, and hacker creativity. Which one do you want to tinker with? Drop it in the comments below. Robot researchers, stunt show directors, AI hobbyists. We want to know which team you're on. Smash that like button. Subscribe to RoboFantastic. And if you want the full spec overlay or shoot ready script next, say the word. I've got you covered.